Hotel of Parachuna and we're now on the Parachuna Gorge Road out towards Blindman. You can see the Flinders Ranges in the background. The sun has finally poked through the clouds and it's slowly starting to warm up out there. 17 degrees outside apparently. So what we're going to do guys is after we leave we'll paint a pound um, in a couple of days we're going to come back along this road and free camp there are a lot of little free camps around great little spots pull up anywhere there's rubbish bins along this road so you can stop and drop your rubbish even the road's not too bad so we're coming into Blinman. Welcome to Blinman, the highest town in South Australia. The Miner's Crib Cafe. Looks like the pub up here on the left. North Blinman Hotel. Going back to my old hometown, picking up the years I leave behind. So we're in Blinman and you can book your mind tours here. They run on the hour from 10 to 3. This is where we are here. We're going into this tunnel. This tunnel is called an adit. Crossword people would say that the entrance to a tunnel is, I mean, a mine is called an adit, but it's not, it's a portal, and then you walk into the adit. The adit's the tunnel. When they originally opened this mine, it was down a shaft on ropes and ladders, like a rabbit down a hole. They put the main shaft down in 1870. That was eight years after they started mining here. So before that, it was just straight down. When we go in, we need to tag in and tag out because we don't want to leave anybody behind. Sweet memories of a town I loved, but oh, it changed when you left. Okay, off to work we go. Before we start talking about the um, actual mine, I would like you to look up. And you have to stand pretty close to this because then you'll be able to see two um, bridges across there. They're called jacks, but it was only the men who came to work in the mine. Women were not allowed down here at all. It was a bad omen if a woman came to a mine. So it was just the men. And they worked in groups of 10. Why groups of 10? I'm not sure, but it was family members and it was all men. So it was fathers, brothers, sons, cousins, uncles, but in a group of 10. On the way out, you can see that there's um, a seam of copper. And it runs from all this way through here. All into here. Ended with a big pocket here. But it's just beautiful. Look up there. Yeah. It took them nine years to get from the top 
down to 91 metres. So a lot of hard work. The top of the tunnel in a mine is called a back. So we've actually um, had it looked at and the experts have found that we do have a fault line above, just above here. It's not a big fault line, but we've got a crack in our back. It's not broken, but for everyone's safety, we've put in this wood. This is Oregon, imported from Canada. We didn't cut down anything for the mine. So the Cornish miners also liked um, wood in their mine because they said it spoke to them. What do you think I meant by that? Well, it was collapsed and the wood would bow and make noises, and if that was happening, they'd get out. That's exactly right. Yeah. So if you can hear any creaking, and we're not talking about knees here, people. <laughs> we're talking about wood. I can blow my whistle and we can run like hell that way, or we can go on. It's your call. So what are they called again? Dendrites. Which in Greek means oh, yeah, they're fern or tree, but they're not. This one here is just beautiful. Yeah, it is. Yep. I'd just like to say thank you for coming on our tour. I hope you've had a good tour. Hey guys, we're in the uh, town of Blinman and we've just popped over to one of the little cottages. Now, this cottage is an original cottage and it was built back in the 1890s, I believe. You just get the key from the information office and then you come over and let yourself in and everything that's in here is meant to have been what they had back then. Now the people that used to own it had a haberdashery shop out here on the main road and this was the cottage where they lived. But we'll go in and we'll have a look. Come on in. So as you can see, what they've done is they've put like a concrete in between the wood on the outside walls just to stop bugs and stuff coming through but also to keep the warmth in and the cold out. If you have a look at the walls on the inside they don't have as much short so you can actually see through the gaps on the interior walls. I keep on asking myself in my mind were you the one that got away? Move a few times but ended up in Nashville Try to settle my restless Guys, right next door to the cottage, here in Blinman, you have the, the Miner's Crib Cafe. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Come on. Souvenirs. Local indigenous artworks. Candles are beautiful. Some basic foods if you need anything. It's a coffee shop and bakery. So some of the flavours of pies, we've got goat curry, pumpkin chicken and curry, kangaroo bush curry, beef, steak and mushroom, pepper steak with cheese and bacon, honey mustard chicken, steak and Guinness, and a miner's pasty with apple at one end. <laughs> okay, the miner's pasty is a classic mix of beef, potato, carrot, onion and pumpkin. As a tribute to our miner's past, we added a section of apple pie at one end, distinguished by the sugar on top of the pasty, the pastry. A complete meal in pastry. So while we're in town, we're going to have a look at the um, North Blenman Hotel. See what they've got to offer. Big pub pile, 22 bucks. There you go. There's a couple of little birds out the front. Welcome to Dave and Caroline's Pub in the Scrub. Meals, times, lunch is 12 to 2.30, dinner is 5.30 to 
the man is bar. Try out and condom baked condom pie. Hmm. So there we have it, the North Blindman Hotel. Let's go and check out the Great Wall of China. I can see why they call it the Great Wall of China, but we have been to the Great Wall of China and that looks nothing like the Great Wall of China. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. So here we have it guys, the Great Wall of China in South Australia's Flinders Ranges. Check it out. Pretty cool. Jump the fence before the summer begins And getting cool in the summer heat with you, my sweet Sitting in the back of your car Wishing for this road to take us far Now I've been away too long I'm going home Oh, sweet memories of a town I love but Guys, we've just turned off Flinders Way to come and have a look at Stokes Hill Lookout. Some wild horses. It's a pretty coloured one. So here we are guys at Stokes Hill Lookout. Check out this beautiful 360 view of the Flinders Ranges. A little bit overcast, starting to spit. You can hear some sheep in the distance. There's emus running around. You can see all the emus down there. A little bit of a mud map here of the Flinders Ranges and we'll, we'll peen a pound. Rangers. Um, we only spent two nights. Obviously, you could spend a hell of a lot more, but the weather's not that flash, very cloudy, overcast. We went up onto their best lookout, uh, Stokes Hill Lookout, and um, yeah, we didn't see too much due to the weather. Um, there's they, no, there's no sunrises and no sunsets because there's no sun at the moment. Yeah, so there's no point hanging around during summer. This would be spectacular. Mm. Well, it's still pretty good to have a look at anyway. Um, but yeah, we covered quite a bit of ground yesterday. We drove through the centre of the Flinders all the way over to Prairie and back around to Blinman, back down to Wilpena Pound. Um, yeah, so we covered quite a bit. Now we're just heading up the road. We don't know where we're going. Um, but we'll let you know when we get there.
Yeah. We stayed at um, Wilpina Pound. Um, we did, th there's a lot of caravan sites, powered sites there, but they are a bit squeezy and there's a few, a lot of trees around. So they actually put us on a bus bay. Bus bay cost us $46 a night. And if you've got NRMA uh, membership, you get 10% off. So he knocked it down to 40 bucks a night for us. So it was only $80. In 200. Talking. Will we stay there again? Nope. No, it's a bit a bit squeezy and we've heard a lot of good things about uh, Rawnsley Station which is just down here. Um, we're heading south at the moment back towards Hawker then we're going to go back up um, the Outback Highway. But yeah, we've heard a lot of good things about Rawnsley Station um, and there's some nice pictures in the Flinders Way magazine. There's also a lot of free camps. Yeah. That are, you're better off pulling up into in a couple of the gorges there like Parachilna Gorge and a few places like that. Yeah. Um, you're far better off staying there for one or two nights and then hitting the road. Yeah, if you don't need power and water, um, yeah, that that's probably one of the good places to stay. But there's a lot of free camps around. Even like where we've pulled over right now just to have a look at the, the mountain. I'll get out the car and actually take a photo and have a look. The other thing is if you are short on power and water, just book in there for one night or find somewhere cheaper where you can get power and water. Yeah. Fill up, top up and then head off to those free camps. Yeah. But this is like a bit of a rest area here. I'll give you a look around. So you could actually just probably just pull up here for the night as you're passing through. But check out that view. That's amazing. There's us. Not as cool today as it has been. I don't have a jumper on yet, but I can, it's, you can still feel it in the air. This is Flinders Way Highway, this one here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, sh us showing you around the Flinders Ranges, and we'll um, talk soon. Morning, guys. Well, uh, we're out at uh, Maree. We decided to stop for the night and um, at the pub. Free camp. Uh, you just got to have a beer or go for a flight um, or have a feed. Anyway, here's the sunrise, which is pretty cool. There's not much out there. And where we are at the moment is, we're at the Mari Airport. We're about to get on that aeroplane and we're going to go for a flight. It's a two hour flight and we're going to go over uh, Lake, I think it's called Lake Air. Um, at the moment, at the top of it, apparently there's a lot of water coming in and it's a massive breeding ground for pelicans. There's plenty of pelicans out there. Um, also, we fly over the Maree Man, which is that massive big, uh, well, it's a shape in the ground of an indigenous guy with a spear. Now, they don't know how it got there, so they say. Apparently, Dick Smith put out a uh, reward for anybody that could turn around and tell them how it got there. They believe that may have been the American uh, soldiers that were based out there, done it basically overnight. Now, the size of it, I think it's five kilometres long. I'll find out some more information when we're on the flight and I'll let you know. But uh, it is absolutely monstrous and apparently they would basically need a GPS to plot this thing on the ground. But we'll take you along for the flight and we'll show you the scenery and uh, just, they do, out of the pub, they do three flights. They do a uh, one and a half hour, a two hour and a two and a half hour. We're on the two hour flight. And it was 500, or it cost me about 1200 bucks for the two of us. It was 500 and something and then GST gets thrown in and then the machine charged me $11 because I used my credit card. But uh, yeah, it's uh, 500 odd bucks, so it's not really cheap, but hopefully we'll get to see some specky uh, sights. Pilots out there getting the old caravan ready. So we're falling on the aeroplane and we're going to go over Lake Air and a few other places. Anyway, it's a uh, pretty squeezy sort of a flight. Got a lot of headroom.
left and right hand side running off the distance. The fence itself is 8 foot high and the categories that cross it are double the size of what other conventional categories are. There's also a layout high pitch star and it's activated by a sensor by any uh, wildlife coming near the fence trying to scare up the dog. Last night we stayed at the Murray pub in the uh, campground here. It's um, free. All you do is pop in the bar for a beer or a feed or go on their scenic flight. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's free. It's just a place to put your van. Got showers and toilets through there. And there's a little communal area over there that, with a table that you can do stuff on. We just parked over up against the fence there and last night there was uh, eight vans and uh, a couple of camper trailers so um, she was fairly full last night they also have accommodation in these little huts and I'll just go over and show you what they look like A little bed, aircon, your own shower and toilet. That's all you need. TV when you're passing through. So yeah, not much here in Maori. The garn used to come through here. And the station's just across here. It's the pub. So over across from the Maori Hotel, you've got a few information boards. One on the Lake Air Basin. Bit of information about remote area travel, resource management, the land types and soils. And then there's a little bit of history here about Kidman. The Kidman story, the cattle king of Australia. In 1870, a 13 year old boy left his home in Adelaide on an old horse. He went on to become one of the world's great horse dealers and the cattle king of Australia. Sydney Kidman was running Australia's largest cattle empire. It stretched from the Gulf of Carpentaria to his home base in Kapunda, South Australia, around 3 
1,500 kilometers and every one a story. So he made his millions by buying up a corridor of land with good water and feed supplies, linking his cattle properties with the market. So there you have it, there's a bit of history here, so come on over and have a read. I'll just show you around the old station. Public toilets right here as well if you need a stop. So this is where the garden used to come through. Smell the vehicles. Part of the old train. The ghosts of the guard. Made out of old uh, railway sleepers. Someone's uh, got a bit of a crafty mind. Pretty cool. It's even got a tail. Public barbecue area. So this is also just across from the hotel, an area here where you can stop and have a bit of a barbecue, little cactus garden, a bit of rubbish in there, barbecues, tables and tennis courts. Mari on a roll, World War II. Where they have their Anzac Day ceremonies. Mari on a roll, World War One. So there you have it, guys. Mari. So if you're stopping by, or if you're passing through actually, um, yeah, stop over at the pub and have a beer, free camp for the night, do a scenic flight, have a look around. Yeah. Talk to you later. So, out in Maree, obviously out in the desert, centre of Australia, we've come across this little building. Out the front is a little plaque saying, in memory of the male contractors of the Birdsville Track, 1886 to 1975, the real pioneers. But, this little uh, plaque is out the front of Lake Air Yacht Club. couple of little boats around the side and apparently there is actually a, uh, oh, a nice little seat down there made out of a couple of old toilets but apparently there is a uh, not an admiral he's got some sort of title um, and he's away at the moment otherwise we'll be able to go in and have a look a couple of little boats Obviously waiting for the waters to rise in Lake Eyre. Canoe. So yeah, the Lake Eyre Yacht Club. The things you see. Well, there you have it. Lake Eyre Yacht Club. www.lakeairyc.com Oh well, we're about to hit the road. Looks like she goes to dirt just up there. So guys, we've uh, just finished our time here in Maori. Our one night. Our one night. <laughs> Done all there was to do in Maori. And now we're going to hit the Unidata track and go through a place called Coward Springs, then on to William Creek and through to Coober From there, our destination today <coughs> will be Marla, 
Marla Springs. So uh, yeah, we'll bring you along and we'll stop and have a look at a couple of little things on the way and we'll show you what's there. But if you are in passing through Maree, there's the free campground at the pub if you have a meal or a beer. Um, we also did the scenic flight, which Dave has mentioned earlier, but now we're heading out just about to hit the Udnadatta track. If you require water um, before heading out of Maree, I'll just turn this camera around. Right in front of us here are caravan signs with tap signs. So it's on the north side of Maree. So go fill your tanks up before you hit that track. Anyway, we'll take you along the Udnadatta. Well, it looks like all tracks are open. Udnadatta track. Mari to Roxby Downs, Mari to William Creek, to Udnadatta, to Cooper Pedy, all open. It's that time again, joke time with Dave. Hey Roz, mm -hmm. I tried to explain to my four year old nephew that it is perfectly okay to accidentally shit your pants. But he's still making fun of me. Catches. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>